and harvest. We bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, ladies. As we prepare with minds to go to the word of the Lord, Galatians 6. Somebody say Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 is going to be our key verse this morning as we end this series on the blessed life. I pray something has been said these past few weeks in this teaching that will get you to start looking at your money differently than you have been. And that you will understand the foundations of stewardship, which is how you take care of your what? Nah, -uh. time, talent, and treasure. So how I spend my time, what it is I do with my time, I make sure that I am being a better steward of that. And because God has given me time, because God has given me a talent, because God has given me finances, I'm going to do what's necessary to get there. So Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9 says, Be not deceived. Come on, stand to your feet quickly. I always know when the preacher starts giving you a text, we know we stand. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he what? Also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall also reap. And also shall of the flesh reap what? Corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not get weary in well doing. I feel like shouting right there. For in due season we shall reap if that's a conditional word, Dick Justin. I only can get the reaping based on the condition of me not giving up. So I want you to sit down. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, so where you want to go. So where you want to go. So for the next 15 to 20 minutes, that's what we're going to do for the work this thing out. You got to realize that we are in the season of seed time and harvest. And as I told you doing exhortation and us going from praise and worship to the word is that some of us have started out late and have had all kind of things not line up the way that they planned for them to line up. But God is saying in this season, I am going to make it up to you. And so for the past month, we have been in a series entitled The Blessed Life. And exegetically dissecting biblical truths concerning God and finance. And I told you the first week we start talking about money was that there is no dichotomy between Christianity and prosperity. But sadly, Victor, the Judeo-Christian church has become deluded by denominational dogma and erroneous exegesis, which means an interpretation, especially of scripture, that exp expresses the interpreter's own ideas, bias, and life rather than the meaning of the text. So that means when a pastor, a preacher, prophet, evangelist, whatever they call themselves, get up and does an eisegesis of the text, that means they're not giving you what God intended of the text. They're giving you what they think the text means. Meaning they're giving you that. That's why we have all these denominations. So you have one man that read a woman should not wear anything pertaining to, to, to a man, and they say, in my church, women can't wear pants. But that's not the correct interpretation of what God meant in Deuteronomy. But their own personal experiences with the text makes them, in turn, make a man-made rule for folks to follow. And so it's the same thing that's happened, Diane, when it comes to our money. So you have some folks that sit around there and say, because we're no longer under the law, which we found out in week one and two, that that's a lie. That because, or because you can sit there and say all day long that I'm not, because we're under the law, uh, Mika, I don't have the tithe. But we found out through the word of God, and our pastor said that tithing was instituted before the so therefore, that argument cannot be given. And so most Christians subconsciously think that poverty is the twin sister of Christianity. That some folk think that you're supposed to be broke, busted, and disgusted. And because you're saved and sanctified, then you just wear your tennis shoes, your hair pulled back, a jean skirt dragging the float, and a t-shirt, and say, I'm going to heaven, and I'm enjoying the trip. The devil is a liar. 
That to be poor is to be spiritual and to have wealth is to be carnal. And in this teaching, I have spent a whole month debunking and subverting this untruth. But not, by now, you should believe by my holy hypothesis that I gave you the first week, Deacon John says, that said this, that by paying your tithes and living for God according to his scriptures, you can be two things. You can be saved and paid. Come on, somebody say it with me. I can be saved and paid. Yeah, see, y'all still didn't get it. I can be what? Saved and because I am too gifted to be restricted and too blessed to be stressed. And so the first week we talked about specifically do your part. We talked about bringing my tithe and offering to the house and doing my part, doing what God has called me to do, obeying God's word, coming to church, coming to Bible study, seeking God's faith. Because it's not all about money. Because in order to be wealthy, then guess what? All aspects of my life are healthy. Yes. So a lot of folk are rich, got money, but they unhappy. And the saints of God, don't we don't want just money and don't have no peace and joy. We want to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. See, I'll be naughty be writing that down. That's a good tweeting moment. I want to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Then the second week we talk about open, I'm opening a trust fund. And then last week we talked about try me that according to, to Malachi 3, he says, now open, test me and see, will I not do it for you, Mika? So now last week we talked about try me, but now today we see here in Galatians 6, be ye not deceived, God is not marked for whatsoever a man soweth, he shall also reap. But he that soweth to his flesh shall reap the flesh of corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary, we're no, but in due season you shall reap if you faint not. See, see, Galatians 6 is all about finances. And we've got to understand this, that Paul is really beating up to a degree, really bringing in the point to the church of Galatia, the Galatian church, that look at here, I need you to learn how to start supporting ministry. I need you to learn how to start supporting teachers who could provide sound teaching to the community. And so you've got to understand, that, like I told you, every week this every week this, this past month is that you do not bring tithes and an offering to pay a pastor. You do not bring tithes and an offering uh, to put a pastor get a Cadillac or to buy a house. Like I said, you bring tithes and offerings to God's house. To God's house. The Bible says bring it to the storehouse. You bring it to God. Why do we bring our tithes and offers? So that the church can do missions, that the church can do outreach, so that the vision of the house can go forth. So that's why Pastor said, need your money. I told you, money matters to three groups of people. It matters to God, it matters to New Birth Community Church, and it matters to me and you. So why does it matter to New Birth Community Church? Because we should not just come to church week after week in order to just pay uh, uh, some light bills, a water bill, and a few musicians. Okay, y'all get quiet on me. It's tight, but it's right. It's hard, but it's God. We've got to learn how to continue to give to ministry that big people outside these four walls and off this street can be blessed. So that we can really go and do what God has called us to do. But you cannot go do anything God has called you to do without people supporting the vision. And without people being compelled to sow into the vision. And so you should want to be a part of a church where you can see your money at work. Oh, y'all better talk to me. How many of us have been in institutions and organizations that have sent, 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 gave, 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 but ain't seen nothing? But one thing about it, New Birth Community, in the past six months, you can walk around this campus and you can see not one, th one thing done, not two things done, not three things. You can make a list and guess what? Probably run out of paper. Because we are constantly moving. We are constantly developing as a church. And even right now, when we give our dismissal, I double dog dare you to go to our 9,000 plus square foot building called the Life Center. And what you saw at last week is not that way this week. Because I believe in vision. And so now the same Life Center that had all kind of issues and problems, guess what? Them problems don't exist now. Because I'm not going to stockpile no money. I'm not going to sit around here and ride around nice and go out and eat and drive around and think I'm my little sedated stuff in God's house line ruins. Oh, no, it does not matter than the pastor. I'm not going to sit around here and care if nobody else don't come. So what did I do? I got out of my bed every day, went to working out, off of work after 4 o'clock in the morning, and came here and worked like a dog and only got fall asleep every day. But guess what? Because I understand it's not about me. It's about God. So it don't matter that my name on the sign, this is God's house, not my house. And because it's God's house, it does not matter because I have an office and you don't have an office. Guess what? Because I got an office, I should come even more than you. Okay, y'all in the kitchen. Because too much is given, much is required. 
And God is looking for some folk. This ain't even on my notes, but I feel this thing. God is looking for some folk that just because you got a title in front of your name, guess what? Then you got to learn how to do a little bit more. So leaders of new birth, the membership should see you here more than they see themselves here. Because why? When you put a title in front of your name, you say, guess what? I see the vision. I saw into the vision. And guess what? I'm now qualified to be a part of what God is doing. Yes. Yes. Some of us have just gotten so comfortable coming and sitting down on a pew. And then you turn around and use this excuse. Well, I'm just burnt out because in XYZ church, I did this, 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 this. Guess what? The church is universal. No, what you did, you did out at an address. Yes, you did that at an address. Have you moved before? Some of y'all went from an apartment and you just went right to the post office and guess what, change of address. You did not stop paying water bill, light bill, cable bill, stop eating, stop cooking. Just because you changed addresses did not mean you stopped living. So how is it then you change locations of ministry but you stop working for God? Ooh, I done had to make some of y'all mad. Victor, get the car crunk up. (laughs) We've got to understand Paul is pushing the church of Galatia that y'all got to do more than what you're doing. You keep making excuses of why, why, why I can't. But you ought to just be able to think about how God has done one thing for you. And when he has done that one thing for you, Reggie, that should be just enough to make you go crazy. Because I'm in a season of my life, Sister Sonia, that if God does not do anything else, he's done enough. Because just the very fact that he woke me up this morning and clothed me in my right mind. Let me tell you something. The more and more I get old, I see more and more people battling dementia and all timers. Guess what? I say, God, I thank you. I thank you that I know who I am. I got folk my age and my family don't even know half the time who they are. Taking all kind of medication. Y'all better talk to me up in here. But I thank God when I opened my eyelids that I was able to recognize who I am and not walk around looking like I'm lost they confused, but some of y'all take all that for granted. As if God owe you something. We do everything we want to do. And Paul is now putting in their face, don't be mocked and don't be deceived because God can't be mocked and God can't be deceived. See, some of y'all are playing with God and it ain't me. You're playing. The Bible says that you come to church, you, 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 you have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. You acknowledge God, but you refuse to tap into his power. Ooh. What's the point of having a car full of gas and have keys in your pocket, but still sit there and say, I don't have a way to work? You got everything you need to get there, but you refuse to access and tap into what you got. But you also want to come around and always blame folks. Here it is in Matthew chapter 7. Y'all need to write this down. Jesus confirms the principle of human conduct, uh, Sister Caitlin. He says, you will know them by their fruits with an S. Somebody say, he's going to know me by my fruits. My fruits, my fruits, my fruits, what I produce, what I bring up. That's how the Bible said, that's how God, God, Jesus told the disciples, disciples, that's how they're going to know you by the fruits, not by your tongues, not by your shout, not by your run, but by the fruits. Somebody say fruits, 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 fruits that you are bearing. And listen here, stop always getting mad at folk when folks call you out on the carpet. You get mad when folks call you out on the carpet and the first thing you say is, y'all judging me. Bible say don't judge. No, baby, I'm not judging you. I'm fruit inspecting. (laughs) Baby, because I'm not blind. If I go to an apple tree, I'm looking to get an apple. If I go to an orange tree, I'm looking to get an orange. And so if you sitting around here an orange and this and you got a sign that say apple tree, baby, somebody lying and it ain't the tree. Because the tree brings forth what the seed has been put in the ground. So 
when you get all offended and get all mad when Pastor Matt want to front you out or call you on the carpet. No, baby, I'm fruit inspector. I ain't judging you. I'm the first person can't judge nobody. But the Bible say all have seen, not y'all, but all. I know some of y'all get like y'all can't read this thing, think it's y'all, but it's all. You included, me included. All have sinned and have fallen short. But he says in his word, Matthew chapter 7, 6 through 13, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears for a good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. That means, guess what, Minister Steel? The more I keep sowing, sowing good, 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 guess what? Nothing bad can come on me. And all y'all keep thinking, I can keep planting some bad seeds and not tithing, not coming to church, not having a commitment with God. But like I told y'all, y'all keep giving y'all money to parking lot prophets. Time about you about to get blessed. The devil is. Because the word of God say, bad tree can't bear good fruit. So the first thing Paul shows us, and I'm almost done. A powerful principles, he says, I need you to understand the power, the power of a seed. Write this down. This is your notes. Understand the power of a seed. What's the power of the seed? Sister Sonia, I'm going to reap what I sow. So whatever seed shall let that I put in the ground, that's exactly the harvest I'm about to reap on myself. What it is that's in my pocket that I look at and I dig up some earth and I put it right there, that's the very thing. So here it is. Y'all get ready for this because this is heavy. What you need to understand is this. Because the power of the seed is in my hands, therefore, Diane, I'm in charge of my harvest. So y'all, 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 I'm preaching better than y'all responding this morning. Y'all must be asleep. I got y'all mind on the Super Bowl or something. Listen. Woo! Listen. You got to realize you are in charge of your own harvest. Stop blaming the devil and other folk about your return when you are the one that's in charge of your harvest. See, you got to realize because you have lack, it's, uh, it's because of you. Because you have an abundance, it's because of you. So you've got to understand that we got to learn how that I have got to get myself together. So what Paul teaches us is, number one, understand the power of your seed. Understand that you're in charge of your harvest because of the power of the seed. The second thing Paul teaches us in this text is you've got to learn how to sow yourself in a productive place. The reason why many of us are not seeing our harvest to its full potential of return is because of one thing. We're not sowing in a productive place. Like I told you, Ayama said it best. When you see crazy walking down the street, cross the street. You keep on having an argument with crazy folks. You keep investing in stuff that is not giving you no kind of return whatsoever. So now you've got to knock on the door of life and say, now who the fool? You've got to understand that the Bible teaches in the book of Proverbs that only a fool argues with the fool. Because a fool is going to go right back to their folly as a dog goes back to its vomit. Okay, I feel like preaching. And so you've got to understand, i got to start sowing myself in a productive place. That's why some of y'all just thought it was so cute and so pretty. And some of y'all need to go right to that foyer as you go into your car and pick up one of those nice graphics that says, I'm working on something. So when people, and you need to put it in your car, put it in your bedroom, put it in your bathroom, because you got to continue to train your mind to say, I don't have time for no foolishness. I don't have time for none of that mess in 2015 because I'm working on something. Do you realize some of y'all right now came and shouted all over church, tell me what you were going to do in 2015 and do you realize the first 31 days of 2015 are already gone? This is February the 1st. You don't have 12 months, you don't have 11 months. And so you've got to realize I don't have time to keep around here twiddling in my thumbs. I don't have time to keep sitting here playing with you. See, you've got to learn how to stop dragging grown folks. Okay, y'all. you got to learn how I'm about to step in and it stir it up so you can smell it. You got to stop trying to drag grown folk. Because one thing about it is grown folks going to be grown. You trying to train, the Bible say train up a child. Not train up a, okay. You got to sow in a productive place. So where are you tithing? Where are you giving money? And you ain't seeing no return. We've been in the church 50 years with the building fund and ain't even seen no new carpet yet. 
ain't even seen new paint. That's not a productive place. So I've got to understand that everything I'm, I'm sowing into, I need to see a return. You should never come to Newburgh Community Church, and if you do, you need to pull the trustee aside, you need to pull the pastor aside, and say, what's going on? I need to know where my money going. You've been here five years, and these the same banners, the same carpet, the same pews, the same parking lot, the same everything. Then guess what? Something wrong. There's something wrong. You just sit there and say, Pastor, I love you. You're, you know, you just preach about that. But look, I need to know where the money going. Because if you can, if I cannot see a return on my dollar, I got to find a place where I can get a return. And you got to understand. That's why the Bible says in the Message translation of Galatians six verses seven through eight, Miss Selena, don't be misled. No one makes a fool of God. What a person plants, he will harvest. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, harvests a crop of weed. And he'll have to show for his life is weeds. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit do the growth work in him or her, harvests a crop of real eternal life. So guess what? I understand now in my life, Minister Steele, is this, that seed breeds expectation. Ooh. Okay, y'all didn't catch it. So that means that's why I tithe, that's why I tip well, that's why I help the poor, because I understand the more I begin to plant seeds, that my expectations in my life increase. Y'all didn't catch that. you got to understand the reason why I give to God, it increases my faith in him and expectation in him. Because I realize, now guess what, if God that gave me a seed to tip like this, then guess what, I cannot, my mind cannot fathom what God's about to put in my lap to do next time. And see, some of y'all sit around here and just sit there, it's just a dollar, it's just five dollars, it's just a hundred dollars. But God said, I need you to learn how to treat your money right. I told him on Friday night, how you treat your money is how your money gonna treat you. Okay, y'all looking at me crazy. Some of y'all got the makeup in your mind. I'm gonna do better right now in your wallet. Y'all got money just throw it in your wallet, throw it in your wallet. It's all crippled. It's all dirty. You can take that money out, clean that money up, make that money nice. Because get what? You got to let that money know, hey, baby, I love you. I don't care if it's a George, but I love you, George. I love you, Franklin. And Ben, I'm in love with you. See, when you see a wealthy person, they have that money on a clip, and when they pull it out, it's all nice and crisp. All the money, right? Even right now, guess what? Even right now, if you go to the bank, Lachey, guess what? Y'all don't accept money any kind of way. They don't care how many folk in the line. They're going to take that money and they're going to press it out. They're going to turn it the right way. They're going to sit there and just keep tapping it. Get everything in order. Oh. And you won't know why you broke. Because you, you, you ain't respecting it. Right now, if I let y'all drive my car, and you don't respect it and take care of it, you think I'm going to give you the keys again? I don't care if it's raining outside. Sister Sonia, I love you. If I can't drop you off or your child can't come, maybe here's a bus ticket. <laughs> Somebody call the church van because she don't know what, she, she don't do right. It was a full tank of gas. She probably don't eat. Left, left all her McDonald's in the back seat of the car. Had mud everywhere. Now, you think I'm going to get her back the key again, Dickie Johnson? Oh, no. I love you, but I ain't crazy. So then why should your money continue to come back to you when all thing you do is ball it up and store it in your purse? Let me start thinking about this. Because again, it's all about a change of the mindset. See, I need you to, I need everybody in this room to repeat after me. Good things are coming my way. Come on, say it with confidence. Good things are coming my way. Not by luck. Not by circumstance. Say, I planned it. I prepared for it. I expect it. Come on, somebody say, I expect it. I planned for my harvest. I sold to get my harvest. I planted my seeds specifically to get my harvest. See, some of y'all sit around here talking about God, God, God. No, 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 no. I was a part of my harvest time. I knew what I was doing. Baby, no, I made up in my mind this was what I was going to do because I expected to get a return on my blessing. See, some of y'all just bring some and throw it in a basket and then thank God. Say, no, 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 no. I just don't come get no money and just throw it anywhere. No, I specifically get up, get an envelope together 
brother get in my car and I come to a productive place called New Birth because I realize every time I sow in New Birth then God starts sending stuff back my way. Don't look at me crazy baby. Don't get it twisted baby. I know where my blessings coming from. I know what God is doing in my life. I can see the results of what I'm doing. You want to hop by your neighbor and say, neighbor, you better give it the program. You better give it the program. You got to realize what I plant is coming back. When you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever I plant is coming back to me. In Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, I've been preparing for this for years. See, some of y'all looking at Pastor Matt like he crazy. But guess what? The season of my life I'm living in. I've been preparing for this for years. I just didn't wake up and put on a bow tie to start talking and preaching like this. But I realized I had to start planning and seeds when I was 15 and 16 years old when I was serving under Dr. Ruby Eldridge I had to sit around there and take ridicule I had to sit around there and take hurt I had to be lied on I had to be painfully hurt I had to be embarrassed no matter what but I kept on serving I kept on preaching I kept on serving when other folks went at the church I was all in the ceiling running video wire because one thing I realized was one day I was going to have to do it for my old church. So I needed to experience then. Okay, y'all looking at me crazy. See, when nobody else would come to church and then learn how to get on the drums at Pure Word and sing at the same time. Because one thing I realized, because one day I may have to come to New Birth and may have to sing by myself. And so you got to look at them and say, neighbor, I prepared for this day. I did everything up to this point. The reason why I'm living in the overflow is not by circumstance. It's not by accident, but I find three people and say, neighbor, I prepare for this. I prepare, I prepare, I prepare. <laughs> I prepare. I prepared, I prepared, I prepared, I prepared, I prepared, I prepared, I prepared. And so that's why right now I need about 18 of y'all to learn how to have a shift in your life. What do you mean, Pastor Mac? I need you to have a shift in your ministry. I need you to have a shift in your home. I need you to have a shift in your marriage. I need you to have a shift in your finance. Because what I realize now, because I'm planning something, expecting to get what I planned. When you look at your name and say, neighbor, I'm no longer going to be stuck on stupid and parked on dumb because God's sovereignty is not an excuse for my stupidity. I got to make up in my mind that I'm not going to just walk around throwing my seed everywhere. I'm not going to just walk around just put everything in the ground because guess what? All grown at the same ground. Don't y'all remember the parable of the sower? The Bible said the former had seed but some felt put it on rocky ground. Some Bible says the Bible says some of it put it on shade ground, but then one of them put it on good ground. Will you high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm putting it on good ground, put it on good ground. Come on, tell them, put it on good ground, put it on good ground. See, y'all sit down. See, see, in 2015, Eric, you got to stop wishing and start working. Hey, y'all in the kitchen. You got to stop wishing and start working. See, everything I'm doing, I'm working on something, I'm working on something, I'm working on something. I can sit right here all day long, sit on the front porch uh, with my coffee cup in my hand, telling me I sure do wish. Oh, I sure do wish. Some of y'all got to learn how to sit there and tell them folks that sit on the coffee, uh, sitting on the front porch uh, in a rocking chair, letting life pass them by. Come on, I sure do wish. Oh, I do remember. Uh, see, the problem with some of us, Dick and Johnson, uh, we keep replaying the past, uh, talking about what could have been. Uh, but God told me to tell half of y'all, uh, he needs you to press play on your life. And start going of what could be. Don't keep telling what could have been. And you want to start looking at what could be. Yeah, I may have lost that then. But now I'm living a life of what could. Of what could be. I'm not going to continue to sit around here and replay the past. And replace what I lost. Because one thing about it, Tyrone. I'm not going to keep focusing on what I lost. But I'm going to start shouting what I got left. I may have lost the car. But thank God I still got my mind. I may have lost. But thank God I still got good health Because as long as I got King Jesus That's all I need When you hop by your neighbor and say Neighbor, if you lose everything you got And still have God That's just enough To start all over again If I do, I have a tool of a survivor Then it don't matter what you lost But as long as I still got God That's all I need To start all over again Come on, hop by your neighbor and say Neighbor, start over, start over, start over, start over 
See, see, God says, God said, whatever I do, gonna prosper. Huh? When you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you put your hands to, huh? God say, in this season, it's gonna work. Huh? In this season, it's gonna prosper. Huh? Come here, Psalm 1 and 3. Huh? He said, he will be like a tree huh? that's rooted and planted huh? by the streams of water, huh? which yields forth its fruit huh? in the right season. Huh? And if the leaf does not wither, huh? and wherever he goes, he prospers. Huh? When you look at your neighbor and say, Nain, huh? I'm gonna prosper on my job. I'm gonna prosper in the ghetto. I'm gonna prosper in Walmart. I'm gonna prosper in Waffle House. I'm gonna prosper in Newburgh. I'm gonna prosper wherever I go. Because I'm planted by the rivers of living water. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, don't get weary and well doing. I'm about to close, y'all. Good evening, y'all. Get the car ready so I can go back home. But Paul said in Galatians 6 and 9, don't lose heart, don't get weary in well-doing, for you shall reap. If you faint not, look at somebody and say, neighbor, you better not give up. Come on, push that neighbor and say, neighbor, you better not give up. I know you've been tired. I know you've been crying. I know you're getting weary, but don't give up, don't give up. Come on, high five, three more, say, don't give up. See, see, Miss Helena, you know what I realized? Your attitude can kill your harvest. Okay, y'all missed it. Your attitude woo, geez, can kill your harvest. Y'all still ain't catch it. Your attitude can kill your harvest. So you keep walking around here saying, I ain't seen nothing yet. Pastor said, told me to pay this little money, I didn't pay that money, I don't see nothing. Pastor said, told me to keep my mouth shut and just keep on working on my job, he, he gonna elevate me. Pastor said, if I came to Sunday school and I, I came to church and everything gonna get better. But when you look at them and say, neighbor, don't get weary. I come on, tell them, neighbor, don't get weary. Come on, say, neighbor, don't get weary. Don't get weary. Don't let your attitude kill what God about to do. Because some of y'all are going to forfeit your own blessing. How do you say that, Pastor Mac? Brandy, I say it like this, Brittany. And the Bible said that life and death is in the power of the tongue. So that's why I can't be talking negativity. That's why I can't be talking no faith. That's why I got to every time somebody say something to me, Mama G. I got to say it's going to work, it's going to work, it's going to work. When you have five, somebody say it's going to work, it's going to work, it's going to work. It's gonna work, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. We're gonna go to two servants, it's gonna work. It's gonna work, it's gonna work. I don't care if there's five people in here. It's gonna work, it's gonna work. Because God will let me raise more money with five people than I packed out nine o'clock. When you have five and say it's gonna work, it's gonna work. It's gonna work in the light center. Do I have anybody in here that will start sowing Pastor Mac and say it's gonna work, it's gonna work? Because I won't get weary. And we're doing because I'm not the reaper. If I think not, if you don't want to wait, maybe that go to door you can go. But I'm gonna be like the 120. The Bible says in Corinthians that was 500 brothers in the upper room. But on the day of Pentecost, it was 120 left. So that means in a 10 day span, 380 folks walked out. But look at them and say, neighbor, I ain't going nowhere. Ain't going nowhere. I done put too much in new birth now to walk out the door. I done sold too much to turn my back now. I done drove too many miles to stay over there and not reap the harvest. I done gave too much money. I done come at the pastor for too many years to walk away now and not get my blessing. When you high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm ready. For my harvest, I'm ready for my breakthrough. I'm ready to go higher. I'm ready to go deeper. I'm ready for the overflow. I find four people and say, neighbor, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't 
don't give out uh, because in due season uh, you will reap. Uh, is there anybody in here uh, that feel God moving? Uh, is there anybody in here uh, that would give a Pastor Mac uh, and say, Pastor Mac, uh, I'm about to bring everything I got uh, because I want to get with you uh, and take the city of Mobile for God. Uh, do I have at least 12 folk uh, in Newport Community Church uh, and say, Pastor Mac, uh, I don't mind so much. Uh, I don't mind giving uh, because I know one thing. I shall reap. Tell them, neighbor, I'm about to reap some stuff. And I ain't talking about nothing bad, I'm talking about good. Because I prepare for this moment. I prepare for this year. Eric, do you not realize that you just didn't drive no miles an hour and a half? Okay, y'all. Okay, y'all, y'all, you see. No, 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 no. For y'all don't know, I minister music drives from Hattiesburg, Mississippi every Sunday and then drive back, then turn around and come back on Monday for rehearsal and drive back after working two jobs. And some of y'all live in the city with no job and don't come. So Eric, don't get weary in well doing, cause I just believe it, my sanctified soul that every mile you drove know how you were going to get gas, was praying that the fumes would take you in, but I feel in my sanctified soul uh, that for every mile you drove, uh, God got to give you a 100 fold blessing, uh, look at your and say neighbor, uh, that's why I can't give up, uh, when people want to talk about you, uh, and say why in the world you keep going, uh, you want to just look at them and say I done invested too much, uh, to walk away now, uh, what do I look like? Uh, Hand it over my mic to somebody uh, that just walked through the door uh, and they reap the blessing uh, of all my hard work. Uh, look at somebody say, the devil is a lie. Uh, the devil, the devil, the devil is a lie. Uh, I'm going to stay right here. Uh, I'm a Why do I stay? I stay because this is a productive place. Anything unproductive, I leave. But if I see the potential, if I see in the spirit that we're going higher, then I continue to sow. Because the Bible is clear. Despise not small beginnings. The problem with us thinking, Justin, especially us black folk, is that we so business focusing on our ending and not our beginning. Because what happens is we want our beginning to match up with our ending. And when our beginning don't match up with our ending, we walk away. But we look at somebody and say, neighbor, don't get weary and well do it. What's the word for the day? I'm going to sow where I want to go. Oh, yeah, I'm going to sow where I want to go. I'm about to live the blessed life. Come on, tell somebody around you, I'm living the blessed life. Baby, I'm living the blessed life. To make you gotta tell everybody, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, and I'm wise. Because everything gives to me, I'm gonna know what to do with it. I don't wanna be a fool with the blessing. Because the Bible tells us, don't cast your, your pearls among. I'm not gonna continue to put my good stuff, my good work, my good money, my good time, my good talent, and it ain't giving me nothing back. I'm just going through motions. Some of y'all should learn to be at the point of your life, and I'm done, that you are no longer existing, that you're now living. You've existed long enough, but now it's time to start living. It's time to start now enjoying life. The Bible says that you shall have life and have it more abundantly. And I don't know about you, Sister Sonia, I don't want my more abundantly. I don't want just the life, I want more abundantly. I want absolutely everything I can get from God. Because if God said it's mine, it's 
Somebody say with authority, if God said it's mine, it's mine. So with that right now, we're done. And we're about to sow, but we want to go. This entire month, we're selecting one Sunday. And we're giving God a super seed, our first fruit offering. Back to you. And we're saying, God, I'm about to sow where I want to go. Now, y'all have gotten your tithe and offering envelopes. But now I want you to, those that are going to participate today in your super seed, your sacrifice, not nothing that ain't going to hurt you. We're talking about total sacrifice. If you're giving today, if you've chosen this day, and for your super seed, I want you to raise your hand. If today is your day for your super seed, some people going next week, some people going to Thursday, some people going to fourth Sunday. But if you are giving yours on today, I want you to lift your hand. If you're giving your super seed on today, those that are going to give you a super seat next Sunday, raise your hand. I'm giving mine next Sunday. So I'm giving it to you. You already have your envelope ready. If you're giving your super seat next Sunday, raise your hand. The next Sunday. So you already have your envelope. So keep your envelope. So when you come to church, you already have your envelope ready with your time and offer. So if you, those that are bringing super seat today, go ahead and fill it out to turn it in today. Those that are going to have it for next Sunday, go head on and get your envelope today. So you can already have it. I pray you were blessed by this series. And I pray that you no longer, that you won't do negotiate tithing and that you won't just do just a little bit today and then you, then you do right for a few weeks then stop. In order to get the principle of God's abundance in your life, it takes consistency. A, a mighty oak tree down on Spring Hill Avenue, that mighty huge oak tree that you can't even touch no matter how bad the roots messing up your foundation. It started out as a simple seed. But look at it now. God is saying that I'm planting you as a seed so the world can watch you grow. Does everyone have that tithing offering number? Look, if you need one, so the ushers will serve you with one and put a tithing offering number. Even if you're paying with debit or credit this morning, please make sure you still out an envelope in its entirety. Name, date, and designate what you're giving to. tithe and offering envelopes ready. Is everyone ready? Amen. As we give unto the Lord this morning. Even if you're paying with plastic, please make sure you still collect your envelope in its entirety. Amen. Let's stand to the Lord as we honor the Lord with our tithe and our offering. Father, you said in all things to give thanks. We thank you right now as we give back the whole tithe back unto you. And Father God, we ask that you will continue to bless our seed and we're sowing where it is where we want to go. Continue to strengthen us through your word, Father. Pray that this seed, Father God, will continue to grow and will bring forth a 100-fold harvest upon our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. From the rear, come on, the direction of the ushers, come on, bring your tithe and offering unto the Lord. Come on, bring them, bring them, bring them quickly. We're going home so y'all can get ready for y'all Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Amen. So good to see all of y'all. So good to see you. So good to see you. So good to see you. So good to see you this morning. Those that are watching online, you can give at the top of the giving button. You can give online. So good to see our, our college kids in this morning, college students rather, here this morning. Amen. Our college young adults. Amen. 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 I'm excited what God is about to do. Amen. I'm sowing where I want to go. Sowing where I want to go. Don't forget if you're still using plastic, still fill out an envelope in its entirety as we give unto the Lord. Now, I got one last thing I need to do real quick. Okay, listen. Who today, who today uh, is into the is into the Super Bowl stuff? Like y'all ain't major Super Bowl people. Raise your hand. You don't wish I ain't. Okay. Okay. Okay, here's the next question. Here's the next question. Who, who, who watches the Super Bowl but don't have a Super Bowl party to go to? I say watching the Super Bowl but don't have a party to go to. Y'all watch but don't have a party to go to. Okay. Next question is, how many of y'all kind of running light on your money today? 
Y'all must think I'm about to make it rain up in here. <laughs> Baby, if I make it rain, y'all better, y'all better come by. Somebody better bring a chair up here and sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so Britt, so you, so you really, so you really, you really watch Super Bowl and stuff? <laughs> Teamwork made the dream work. gift certificate to Wild Wings, Buffalo Wild Wings, baby. So you go, you go eat you some wings. Get you a dis dessert, dessert, dessert. Get you, get you Coca Cola, get you something. Amen. So you got twenty dollars. See, see, y'all, y'all ain't talking to me on this side. They ain't talking to me over here. They Now, if, now, see, at the boom boom, they be yelling moon pie and cup. Y'all ain't yelling nothing over here. Ramen noodles. <laughs> Baby, you don't have to eat ramen today because I went to church and I got a blessing. Shout it! Yeah. Yeah. Now you bless somebody with that 10 cent pack of noodles. <laughs> Baby, you see how God do? God, God turned 10 cent to $20. I wasn't even expecting it. See y'all, see I thank God for that kind of stuff. Now Brittany, you have fun with them wings now. Amen. Think about Pastor Seb. Frederick, think about Pastor Seb when you eating them wings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ha -ha. Listen, I'm so excited. Listen, do you know what y'all church did this week? Ch our church gave away, we blessed a couple that was low on funds today. We blessed them with two tickets and backstage passes and to get free food, drinks to a basketball game in South Alabama this week. Thank you, Mr. Brady, for making that happen. And, and guess what? The young lady was talking on Facebook. She said, I was able to do an impromptu date with my book, and we had no money. And he was so happy. Thank you, Pastor Said in Newburgh. And she had, they had backstage, whatever thing. You know, I ain't into sports stuff. But they had, they had, they went to the little Carnegie Hall, Kennedy Room from after party. There you go. And they was able to eat for free. They was able to eat for free, get drinks. And they said, they said, Pastor Said, you treated us like royalty. I said, that's the Newburgh way. So new birth, you should be proud how we continue to sow into other people. We continue to give back. Because guess what I've learned? It's just the small things that go a long way. Just the small things. And I want to publicly say to Sister Lachey, where'd you go? She upstairs, she go? Okay. Thank y'all so much. They did a fantastic job. Come on. If you miss the finance conference, you miss some good stuff. And, and, and I'm gonna be just like Moses, that the Bible says that when the folks miss the blessing of the, of the, of the, of the first sacrifice, uh, that God let, let them do another one, a makeup test. So for y'all that flunk the test, I'm gonna let y'all do a makeup exam. So we're gonna get with Regents Bank, the credit store, and some other place, people that were here, and in, in around April, we're gonna do a one day summit but it, it was so much vital information that you absolutely need in your personal life and your business to help you establish business credit, help you establish, establish right now, some of y'all that got children, parents, right now to start a college fund with Regions Bank, just $25 a month. 
is that you can afford $25 for it. You can afford $25 for your child. Wait, a month, that's $5 a week. But about $7 a week. Come on, let me do that. So you, you can do that. So you can see some shade with that kind of stuff. Yes, and you're only going to go to the Regis Bank in Sims to do it. Because you're going to get, Sister Lachey going to get that credit. Okay, we're going to support our own. So we, again, you missed the tree. So you listen, I am expecting every member of our church to be there. The hour in total. I don't, have, I don't even care about marketing outside the four walls. I'm more concerned about how you're living. Charity begins at, then spreads up. Ooh, y'all buy the wheels. Amen. And so I thank God for all of y'all. Thank y'all for all the help. Listen, I, the last thing that I'm going on, shut up three this time. Everybody leave. Before you get in your car, I want you to go to the Life Center. Mama G, so I want you to go unlock it. I want y'all to promise me that you're going to go into the Life Center before you get in your car and drive off. I just want you to see, because some of y'all don't even know y'all church got that building back there. Some of y'all, 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 some of y'all come to church and shop run over, don't even know y'all church got all this stuff. We got basketball courts down there, bathrooms, wood, kitchen, all kind of stuff that you can have wedding reception, parties, and all that kind of stuff. Amen. Dance floor and all. You can stage, everything, lights, screens, and everything. Amen. So you need to go back there and look at it. Amen. So so don't forget February the 14th as well. You need to see Miss Helena. If you have a child and you're trying to do something with your boot thing and children are not allowed to go with you in your boot thing, bring them to the church for $25. They're going to have pizza, snacks, games from five movies from 5 p.m. to midnight. That's a lot of time for you and your boot thing. Seven hours. But 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 by 11.50, you need to be here to pick up your insurance. Amen. Because we ain't trying to be here at 12.30 and 1 o'clock in the morning. Amen. We will call the DHR and the police. Amen. That, that is the disclaimer. I'm telling you that. Amen. Amen. That's abandonment of the child. So listen. Uh, we ain't say sleepover. That's $50. So, Miss Alina said, no, after seven hours, y'all ain't gonna bait me up for no more. So, so Miss Alina, bring your hammers and everybody see who you are. So you see her, and she got her little team together. They're excited. So that's February the 14th on the actual day of Valentine's. So spread the word. We need everybody to spread the word. Y'all know y'all got cousins, mama and them, sister and them, uncle and them, all them folk in your family that, that want someone for their children to go safe and fun. Miss Alina is over that, and it's $25. And if you they have an early registration right now for $20, then you can go ahead and register your child. So she, she has all the information, okay? So let's please make sure you go to the lights and let's stand. We're going home. And y'all, don't forget, Bible study Thursday at 12 noon. Some of y'all, I still ain't seen in Bible study. 12 noon, 12 noon, 12 noon, 12 noon. So let's stand. That may be someone here on the side of my voice that does not know the Lord as a personal Savior. That today you want to make New Birth Community Church your church home. That you want to come for a Christian experience. You want to come to make New Birth Community Church your church home. Or you're in between churches and you don't know exactly where you're going to go, but you need a covering until you know your final destination. We want to invite you to come for watch care. And three, you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, but you want to get saved today that you're coming for salvation. If there's one this morning on the side of my voice coming for salvation, coming for full membership, or coming for covering. Is that one this morning on the sound of my voice before we go home? God bless you. Amen. God, thank you. Amen. If this is your first time here, please come shake my hand. I want to know that you're here. Don't forget, members, do not get in your car first. Please go to the Life Center and check out the things that we've done just in one week. Father, I speak a blessing over your people for the word declares that the man of God can cause blessings to rest upon the house of the people. So, God, I speak blessings over them, that blessings will overtake them, that, Father God, this will be a productive week, that, Father God, new contracts will be signed, Father God, new clients will be claimed, Father God, that, God, everything our hands go to do, that as you're according to your word in, in Psalm 1, verse 3, Father God, that wherever we go to do, it shall prosper. Cover our homes like never before, God. Bless uh, our church like never before, God. Bless those who are not here today for whatever reason. Cover them with your blood. Continue to uplift, we'll continue to uplift and strengthen, Father God, our bereaved families are part of this ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Love on somebody and tell them it's so good to see you. Please go check out the Life Center. Please go see the Life Center. Please.